Neanderthals weren't the brutes you were taught about. One discovery proves they care deeply for the vulnerable. But what if I told you that's just the beginning? Across thousands of years and continents, scientists have uncovered 10 secrets that challenge everything we thought we knew about these ancient relatives. Let's start with something that might surprise you. Number 10. Neanderthals had a keen sense of fashion. Neanderthals had a keen sense of fashion that went far beyond the stereotype of crude animal hides. How did Neanderthals stay agile in ice-cold Europe? The answer lies in their fashion. Archaeological evidence shows they crafted clothing using specialized tools, making garments that were likely more complex than simple draped hides. Scientists haven't found any frozen Neanderthal clothing, but the clues are in the details. Stone tools with hide residue, bone awls perfect for punching holes in leather, and even twisted cords that could have been used for shoes or tying garments. These tools suggest Neanderthals processed animal skins carefully, softening and preparing them for sewing. They adapted their clothing to the harsh climate, showing both creativity and practical skill. Instead of just surviving, they developed techniques to thrive, revealing a level of resourcefulness that challenges the old myths. But fashion isn't the only area where Neanderthals defied expectations. Number nine, they cared for disabled community members. In a cave in Spain, researchers discovered the ear bone of a Neanderthal child known as Tina, dating back between 273,000 and 146,000 years ago. Tina lived with Down syndrome, hearing loss and vertigo, serious challenges that would have made independent survival impossible in the harsh Ice Age environment. Yet the evidence shows she survived well beyond infancy. Her survival required sustained care from her community, food, protection, and constant support. This wasn't a small effort. It meant that multiple individuals worked together to help Tina navigate daily life. Such compassion and cooperation point to a society with empathy and strong social bonds, far removed from the old image of Neanderthals as indifferent or isolated. If Neanderthals could organize themselves to care for their most vulnerable, it raises new questions about their abilities in other areas. Their capacity for innovation might surprise you. Number eight, Neanderthals created an early glue factory. Long before factory chimneys filled the sky, Neanderthals in Gibraltar were working with fire and chemistry in ways that might surprise you. Archaeologists uncovered a 65,000-year-old hearth used for a remarkable process, creating tar. This wasn't a lucky accident. Neanderthals heated plant resin and charcoal to about 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 degrees Celsius, producing a strong adhesive they used to attach stone spearheads to wooden shafts. It took precise control of heat and timing, evidence of real engineering skill. Picture a small group tending the fire, adding just the right mix of resin and wood, and carefully watching the temperature. The tar they produced made their hunting tools sturdier and more reliable, giving them a real edge in survival. And this glue wasn't just sticky. It helped build weapons that changed the balance of power. But technology wasn't the only area where Neanderthals showed depth and intention. The way they treated their dead reveals even more about their world. Number seven, modern humans and Neanderthals buried their dead differently. What does the way we bury our dead say about our beliefs? For Neanderthals, those rituals were surprisingly deliberate. Archaeologists have found that Neanderthals buried their dead in caves, placing them in a variety of positions. Sometimes they included tools or personal items, hinting at rituals or beliefs tied to the afterlife. These were not random acts. The choice of location and the presence of grave goods suggest a sense of meaning and perhaps even a belief in something beyond death. Early modern humans, by contrast, tended to bury their dead outside caves, often in a fetal position. This posture could have symbolized a return to the womb or marked territory for the living, showing a different approach to loss and remembrance. Both groups included items in graves underlining the existence of symbolic or spiritual beliefs. For all their differences, these burial practices show a level of thought and care that's hard to ignore. But there's another side to Neanderthals that often goes overlooked, one that might look more familiar than you'd expect. Number six, they looked a lot like us. Neanderthals' physical appearance is often misunderstood. Thanks to facial reconstructions like that of Shanadar Z, a Neanderthal woman from Shanadar Cave in Iraq, whose skull was pieced together from hundreds of bone fragments, we now have a much clearer picture. Her features included a prominent nose, strong brow ridges, and no defined chin, details that set Neanderthals apart from modern humans. 
but when researchers added soft tissue to the reconstruction, the differences became less dramatic. The result was a face that, while distinct, had a surprisingly familiar look. If you saw someone with broad cheekbones and deep-set eyes, you might not think twice. These reconstructions challenged the idea of Neanderthals as drastically different from us. So close to us in appearance, what did that mean for their relationship with our ancestors? As we look closer at their final years, a different story emerges, one shaped by shrinking communities and growing isolation. Number five, the last Neanderthals were isolated and inbred. DNA from a Neanderthal nicknamed Thorin, dated between 52,000 and 42,000 years ago in France's Rhone Valley, reveals a striking pattern, long-term isolation and inbreeding. Despite other Neanderthal groups living within walking distance, Thorin's group remained separated for thousands of years. The genetic evidence shows a high degree of inbreeding, pointing to a small, closed community with limited contact or gene flow from outsiders. This lack of genetic diversity likely made the group more vulnerable to disease and less able to adapt to environmental changes. The real puzzle is why these groups stayed isolated when others were so close. As researcher Ludovic Slimak asked, how could populations live for millennia in isolation while separated by only a short journey? Could this long-term genetic solitude have sealed their fate? The answers may lie even deeper in the Neanderthal genetic legacy we carry today. Number four, male Neanderthal DNA seems to have vanished without a trace. Among the puzzles left by Neanderthal genetics, one stands out. While modern humans carry fragments of Neanderthal DNA, None of it comes from the Y chromosome, the genetic marker passed from father to son. The disappearance of this male lineage remains one of the biggest genetic mysteries. How did it slip away without a trace? Scientists have several ideas. One leading hypothesis is that pregnancies between Neanderthal males and human females sometimes faced immune complications. If a mother's immune system recognized Neanderthal Y chromosome genes as foreign, it may have attacked the fetus, resulting in miscarriages. This idea is still unproven, but it could explain how male Neanderthal DNA vanished over time. Another factor is genetic drift. The Y chromosome, inherited only through sons, is especially vulnerable to loss in small populations. With Neanderthal groups already shrinking, even random chance could have erased this genetic legacy. Despite these missing pieces, the connection between Neanderthals and modern humans runs deeper than a lost chromosome. Their story didn't end with extinction. Number three, Neanderthals were probably absorbed into modern human groups. Neanderthals were probably absorbed into modern human groups through a long process of interbreeding that began about 47,000 years ago and lasted roughly 7,000 years. Instead of a sudden extinction, their genes blended with ours, creating a shared legacy that still shapes us today. Genetic studies show that people living outside Africa carry about 2.5% to 3.7% Neanderthal DNA, clear evidence of this deep connection. Imagine two communities meeting at the edge of the world, different at first, but slowly merging, exchanging not only genes, but also ideas and survival skills. Over generations, the differences faded as their lineages intertwined. Research even reveals that the Neanderthal genome itself contained traces of human DNA, highlighting just how extensive this exchange was. What does it mean to say Neanderthals didn't vanish, but merged? Their story lives on in every one of us, quietly influencing the way we live, even today. Number two, Neanderthal DNA affects our health. Neanderthal DNA shapes our health in ways you might not expect. Some Neanderthal genes improved fertility and lowered miscarriage risk, while others raised the odds of developing allergies, type 2 diabetes, depression, or even autoimmune conditions. Scientists have also linked Neanderthal variants to increased pain sensitivity, greater risk of nicotine addiction, and more severe reactions to COVID-19. These genetic traits inherited through ancient interbreeding create a complex mix of advantages and drawbacks in our daily lives. Next time you feel a spring hay fever attack, consider, it might be a Neanderthal legacy. The same goes for how your body reacts to sunlight or your risk for certain modern diseases. What once helped our ancestors survive can now shape our own health in unexpected ways. But how did Neanderthals disappear if their genes remain? The answer isn't as simple as conflict or conquest. Number one, we didn't kill them, just outlasted them. 
Modern humans didn't wipe out Neanderthals through violence. Instead, we simply outlasted them by building stronger social ties. Neanderthals likely formed close bonds within small groups, but early humans connected communities across wide regions, sharing hunting strategies, resources, and support. This networked approach helped humans adapt to changing environments and survive when times were tough. When a Neanderthal group faced a harsh winter or shrinking food supplies, their survival depended on just a handful of people. In contrast, human groups could call on distant allies for help, pass along new techniques, or join forces when resources grew scarce. Over thousands of years, this difference in social structure gave humans a steady advantage, gradually shifting the balance. It wasn't the spear that won the day, but the strength of human connections. And when we look back, we start to see that Neanderthals weren't so different from us. Their legacy is one of integration, not disappearance. Neanderthals contributed to our health, our appearance, and even the way we adapt to the world. The story of Neanderthals challenges old myths and shows that our history is much more connected than we once believed. Their genes are woven into our DNA, shaping us in ways we continue to discover. If this changed your view of our ancient cousins, hit subscribe and join us as we explore more hidden chapters of the human story. Let us know in the comments which Neanderthal secret surprised you most.